Hi, I'm Femi OK. Today on the stream, what is next for Afghanistan? We are going to be looking at the hopes and challenges of Afghans facing Taliban rule. Do you have an opinion? Would you like to be part of the conversation? You can do. If you're on YouTube, you can be in the comment section and be part of today's show. Whenever a new government is formed, it has to prove itself to the rest of the world, and we are worried what if the Taliban can't. My children are anxious that they won't be able to go out and live their lives or be involved, maybe in politics and civil society. I don't have a problem wearing a burqa as long as there's security and justice. It's just a piece of fabric. They've said that men and women will be separated at work. Well, that's OK, too. I will work. The voice of the man on the street and the woman on the street in Kabul, Afghanistan. Let us meet our panel. Hello to you, Ali, Nadima and Charlotte. Really good to have you all here to help us unpack Afghanistan today. Ali, tell everybody who you are and what you do. Welcome to the stream. Thank you. Um, I'm Ali Latifi. I'm Al Jazeera's online correspondent in Kabul. Good to have you. Hello, Nadima. Welcome to the stream. Please tell everybody who you are and what you do. My name is Nadima. I'm a social influencer uh, in Afghanistan. Good to have you. And welcome back, Charlotte. Nice to see you. If people don't know who you are by now, Charlotte, they're not watching Al Jazeera. But just in case, just in case they were flipping and they decided to stay, tell everybody who you are <laughs> and what you do. Yeah, I'm Charlotte Bellis. I'm a correspondent for Al Jazeera and I've been in Kabul for a couple of months now. All right, uh, Nadima, where would you take me in Afghanistan today? Where would you like to go? <laughs> Anywhere you want to take me. Ta where would you take me? Describe the place you'd take me to tell me, show me what it is like. What's your experience been like in the past couple of weeks? And, and now that the focus has moved away from Kabul airport, away from that story, away from foreign powers, now it's all about what Afghanistan is going to do with Afghanistan. Where do we need to go? What do you want to show me? One thing. Well, I would, I would, I'm in Kabul right now, in Kabul, Afghanistan. And for me, in my reality, what has changed is my friends are no longer with me. The people that were in my circle, they've all left Afghanistan, Kabul. And... Uh, and also uh, the people that I could have called for guidance or for direction um, are no longer here. So that is a big change for me. Um, other than that, I went to a wedding yesterday. I had uh, a great time. I wore a beautiful dress. I look forward to sharing the pictures with you in a little bit. Uh, for me, life is still the same. It's very quiet. Uh, very peaceful, uh, and I welcome you anytime you come. And if you come to my reality and see things from my eyes, yeah. uh, things are still the same. Perspective, you know? perspective is so fascinating. Ali, uh, as you're out and about, I know that you're in Kabul, but what are you hearing from areas and provinces outside of Kabul, outside of the, the big metropolitan area? Um, you know, we've been hearing reports from, you know, Ningarhar in the east. We've been hearing reports from Kandad in the south, Herat in the west. And I think the reality right now is everyone is, is sort of holding their breath. You know, everyone is sort of um, trying to sort of test the limits, right? Test the water, see how much you can do without getting in trouble and whether or not the Taliban will start to implement the kinds of rules that they did in, in the 90s, you know, for instance, I've been talking to like barber shops, right? And they've been saying that, that their uh, income is down uh, for the last few weeks because people are afraid, even though they haven't said anything about it, but men are afraid to, you know, trim their beards because they don't know if mm -hmm. that will become a law once again. Um, and the, the biggest issue right now for everyone around the country is the economy, you know, because so much of Afghanistan's money has been frozen right now, ever since the Taliban took over the IMF, the World Bank, the U.S. Federal Reserve, Western Union. All of these people cut off, uh, you know, their financial ties to Afghanistan. And so that means the banks are essentially without money. And you're having people all over the country waiting 
hours and hours in line uh, at a bank hoping to be able to take out some money. But, you know, so many people that we talked to have said they've had to wait three, four days and still haven't been able to do that. So that's really the biggest worry right now. I, I want to um, show a scene that, that really uh, backs up what you're saying there, Ali. Uh, Rob McBride was, was reporting a little bit earlier on, and there were lines and lines and lines, a huge queue, huge queue for people to trying to get into the bank. He talks about that, but watch what's happening in the foreground, because there's yes. some crowd control going, Ali's already seen this, there's some crowd control going on. I was while, there. Well, <laughs> well, I'll come right back to you then. There's some crowd control going on, spoiler alert, while Robbie's trying to tell us what is happening with people waiting in line to try and get their money out the bank. Have a look. People's access to banks and to cash remains a real problem. The banks have largely remained closed. When they are open, there are strict limits on how much you can withdraw. And it all points to a much bigger fiscal problem of how Afghanistan is going to pay its way under a Taliban government. Rob's looking a little bit concerned as people being pushed out of the way. Ali, what's, what's going on there? So basically, because there were so many people in line, the Taliban took control of the lines out of the mm -hmm. banks and they made, I was there with him that day, and so they made people sit on the floor, like uh, on the ground, um, like maybe about 20, 30 meters away from the bank entrance, uh, and then they would let them come 10 or 20 people at a time, but then when people would cut the line, uh, whether they would come from another side of the street oh, or if they would just try and sneaky. rush into the line. Yeah, yeah. But there's another thing. So there's another part where Rob is interviewing a commander, a Talib commander. Yeah. He's like, Everything is fine. We're bringing order. We're bringing structure to society. And what you don't see is behind him, you know, again, a few, a few meters behind him is the Taliban are basically shooting into the air. They're uh, you know, they're taking branches from trees and trying to hit people with them, and they're trying to hit people with uh, pebbles on the floor. And it's it's really this sort of cognitive dissonance, right? Because the commander's yeah. saying everything's great, Amazon everything control. is under control. Yeah, because we're going to shoot But then you. right behind him, <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Charlotte, you have been talking to the Taliban. There's a whole series of conversations that you've been having with them. I'm going to go to a senior Taliban leader. You asked, what did you want? What are you expecting for Afghanistan, what is it that, what's your vision for your country? This is the response, and then Charlotte, come off the back, because I'm really curious as to who is governing Afghanistan right now. Overall, and to maintain and be faithful to what we were fighting for, to serve the Afghan people and to serve Islam. The people who were working towards this goal have been fighting for 20 years, have given their lives, lost family members, and have been locked inside jails. Okay, so, yeah, we talked to Anasa Khani, um, I think it was Monday now. Um, yeah, I mean, they're in the process of, tr of trying to figure out who's going to be in what position with the government. Um, I asked him what position he was going to have, and he said he doesn't know at the moment um, that he actually didn't want to be in government. He just wanted to finish his education. Um, but he said, we do what our elders tell us. So it's a very kind of regimented, disciplined um, uh, kind of hierarchy. And, yeah, basically he said we're just waiting to hear from the, the top, top guys about who's going to do what and, and how this is going to roll. Does it feel like that the Taliban is in charge right now? Or does it feel like it's a transitional period and people aren't quite sure who is running Afghanistan, how it is running? I mean, in my my opinion, the Taliban very much are in charge. There's no way you can escape it. Everywhere you look, there's old police vehicles with Taliban fighters driving around town, at least in Kabul. I mean, it's very much in your face that they're here and uh, they rule the roost now. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as the structure of it, I mean, like Ali said, I think the main thing, people are, people are pretty happy that security is pretty good. I mean, mm. there were hundreds of people dying. That's not happening anymore. Um, but the main thing is the economy, and, and people are quite worried about um, if they're going to be able to pay salaries, can they get money out, that type of thing going forward. Nazima, there's a, there's a take on security that I never would have thought of before I started to follow you and, and 
how you are processing what is happening to your country. And that is uh, the instances of sexual harassment. Um, how has that changed in the past couple of weeks for women? Well, I think I personally feel a lot safer, to be honest with you, and I don't feel like I'm going to get robbed. And I felt that way. But my cousin who came to say goodbye to my mother from Herat was sharing these stories with me. I asked them how they felt because they've been here longer than me. And they said one great thing that they had experienced that during Taliban time. And once again, is they don't have to worry about their phone getting stolen in the middle of the daytime. And they, don't want, they won't have any more men whistling at them and men harassing them in the cabs and putting inappropriate music around them. So um, for me, I, to be honest with you, we are all talking about the Taliban, which at first it was the airport, now it's the Taliban. My focus is the women, and I am living my life, my reality as it was before. Mm -hmm. I am more focusing on how, like Ali said, how we're going to move forward. And I want to start taking care of these widows and these orphans that are starving. There's people that have migrated from different provinces. They're all in the park in Kabul city. We need to focus on them. You know, we're, we're focusing on, on Taliban's and we're already talking about have they take, yes. My question to the world and to yourself is who have, how did this all happen? I feel like this was all orchestrated. Like who funded them and who is doing this? And whoever is doing it, good for them. But we have people that are dying here. We already had death taking place at the airport. This could have been easily prevented. This has these deaths that were caused. These answer, I want these answers from the international committee who knew what the consequences of doing, evacuating people in such manner and creating chaos out of it. And now we have completely removed that and completely pretend that those lives did not matter. I want to bring in the so voice I think of... Uh, Nadima, you, you said your focus was on women, and, and I want to bring in the voice of Hosnia. Hosnia spoke to us just a few hours ago. Her comment is full of hope. Have a listen, have a look. I have not decided to leave my country because I think uh, my country still needs us, and I am hopeful. Uh, to be a symbol uh, for serving my compatriots. And as a woman, I hope the Taliban that uh, do not uh, prevent the women's activities and be on their own speeches. Uh, just uh, this is my hope as a woman. Thank you. articulated so much I, hope um, that, that that was an upbeat comment that was like i i am i am hoping for the best but what's the, no, what's the reality very, i'm very proud of her it makes yeah. me feel good to know that me and ali are not the only people who feel this way mm. and it is true and also i feel like this time we women around the world especially with the power of social media we're not going to demand our rights anymore. We're going to make clarity and show that we're the one who have brought creation. We're the creators. We're the mothers. We're the sisters. We're going to work together because we are not in competition. Those times are over now. We complement to each other. I have already offered Taliban or anyone in the world, not for my rights, but let's work together because we are all the same and we're going to work together to move forward. And you know what? What is funny and bizarre to me is that every time there is this political movement or any kind of shift this are happening, women become center of the subject. Mm -hmm. And the rules and this dictatorship and this everything is starting to roll around women. I wish instead of dictating how we're going to dress, Everyone around the world, especially leadership, focus more on the widows and women that are prostituting themselves to survive. I think if they care so much about women, they should start worrying about what women that are being trafficked around the world. If, they, if men care so much about us, especially Taliban, then 
once again, I will say, come sit with me and let's talk about how we're going to save lives, especially widows, mothers, sisters. Nadima. Instead of worrying about what avatar we're going to wear, I don't care what I have to wear. Yeah. I care about the women that are getting sold and drugged and molested and killed on the street. So, Nadima, Hardik is on YouTube right now. Hardik believes that you are scared to talk about the Taliban. What would you say back to Hardik? He's Hardik is watching right now. <laughs> Where is Hardik from? Where is he speaking to me from? Is he from North and now is in Afghan man somewhere from North America telling me I'm scared of the Taliban? Is that what he's telling me? Yeah, he's on YouTube he's comment asked... section. It's a land of its own. <laughs> okay, he's in Afghanistan and he's asking me if I'm scared of he's mm -hmm. saying I am scared of Please clarify. He that. is wondering, he is commenting about your your positivity, okay, and saying uh -huh. that you're you're scared of talking about the Taliban. And your Did laughter you... is the response, I I'm guessing. Let me let me add on another thought here. Uh, Charlotte, let me let me put this one to you. This is Akshaya Kumar, uh, and this is more typical of a lot of the comments that we're hearing from outside of Afghanistan. As she is in New York and she speaks with great passion and concern about what will happen to women and girls in Afghanistan. Charlotte, have a listen. The truth of the matter is that Afghan women and girls weren't saved by the West, but they have spent the past two decades empowering themselves, becoming educated, becoming judges who uphold the rule of law, working as human rights defenders. And now those gains are at risk because of the Taliban's narrow interpretation of what women's rights should look like under Islam. We've already seen that means they believe that women should not be educated in the same building where there are men with male teachers. And practically, we know that that means that fewer Afghan girls are going to get a chance to learn. And fewer girls in this generation under the rule of the Taliban will learn than they did in their mother generation and that is truly truly heartbreaking okay um i mean i've heard a lot of the, the same concerns i think it's warranted to be fearful uh because we don't really know at this point how conservative they're going to be who's going to be holding the reins and if that person um will be progressive or from the taliban of the 90s so yeah that that's fear but they Schools have gone back. Girls are back in school for everything up until university. Yes, classes are segregated, but there were many classes, and I think uh, I've talked to Ali about this as well, many classes were segregated uh, before in other countries. Girls and boys are segregated. I've also heard people say that more girls will get an education now because uh, in conservative families, they didn't want to send their girls to a mixed classroom. And if it's segregated, then these, these fathers will be, will be happier to send their girls to school. So at the moment, there's a lot of speculation. There's a lot of hysteria. There's a lot of fear, which is fear to feel fear. Uh, but right. it's, it's like Ali was saying, it's a watch and wait. I mean, we, we need to see how mm -hmm. this plays out. And I think it's really important at the moment for people to set the standard of, of what uh, they'll take from the Taliban. I mean, um, to Nadima's point as well, like, I know we don't want to talk about what we're going to wear, but I've had a lot of pushback from Taliban in certain areas saying, we're not going to talk to you because you're not wearing um, an abaya and all this. Um, get out of here. And I've said, hang on a second, I've talked to your leaders and they've said me just wearing a headscarf is perfectly fine and they're your bosses. So if you've got a problem with it, take it up with them. And and they sit down. So I think if you lay, lay the expectations early, like this is this but is Charlotte, what we're you have a do. certain privilege though, don't you? You have international privilege. Absolutely, I just yeah. I just made that I word do. up, but you have privilege. If Nadima said it, yeah. Nadima, what would happen to you if you said the same thing? First, Charlotte, I personally you don't go around and talk to the Taliban's on the street. I never even talk to the soldiers on the street. Even the soldiers before used to slap my car or disrespectful. I, I've been, I've spoken about this in public. I've, I've addressed this issue many times. The soldier needs to have a bit mannerism. Uh, they're rude and disrespectful. And I never went to the soldiers on the street. I took it up with their commanders and the seniors who were under them. So I would not, I haven't, and I will not go on the street and talk to 
uh, the boys that have little guns in their hand and walking around because they're not in order uh, and they are not under, um, they can, many of them I don't even know where they're from and I don't. But who I will speak with is the seniors who have come in the leadership role. So talking to the guys on the street, 90% uh, don't even know that how to drive the cars. I don't even know where they pick these people from. So I will not waste my time on, on, on the Taliban's on the street. I'd actually ask Sherla to not to protect herself because none of them are even stable, you know. But if you're talking to the one who the leadership, the, the seniors, then if there were there, I would come and give all, all my energy and cr create more clarity. Do you understand? Nadima, can I ask, I mean, how important, and, and also Ali, I'm curious from you as well, like how important do you guys think it is as Afghans to set a standard early with the Taliban of, of what you're, what you'll take and what you want? Do you think that you guys have, uh, influence at all of setting particular standards, whether it's clothing or or other rules? I think it is important to try and set that standard, and I think it's important. It's difficult because not everybody feels safe and comfortable to come out on the street right now, right? I mean, you see a lot less women, let's be honest. We see a lot less women out on the street. We even see less men than we would have in the past. And I think part of that is that people, like, they don't know if they can go about their normal lives. And I've had this question myself, and I'm sure you've noticed it too, in that, like, just in the way I dress, you know? On the one hand, I think, okay, maybe I should just go by their standards, you know, just wear a pit on bond, dress traditional, so that I don't, ups the last thing I need to do is upset them more and possibly risk some kind of, I don't know, violence or, or being thrown in jail or whatever, right? But then on the other hand, I think, well, maybe we we should just set this, like, as you said, set the standard now and be like, this is who we are. This is how we act. This is how we dress. And, you know, you if we accept you, you have to accept us. And it's this weird sort of back and forth. Because is I is did it, have is it different on different days, uh, Ali? Do you decide, OK, I, I, I'm not wearing this today. I'm not feeling bold or I'm making this clothing I decision because mentally you're ready. <laughs> I've only worn jeans and a t-shirt three times, uh -huh. and the last time I did, I got I I, I got stopped by a Talib, mm -hmm. and he mm -hmm. said like, "What are you wearing? Go change your clothes." Uh -huh. And to be honest, like I was I was afraid that because he had a gun, you know, I was like, "Is he gonna kill me? Is he gonna shoot me? Is he gonna hit me? Is he gonna throw me in jail?" Obviously, nothing happened. You know, we both said what we had to say, walked mm -hmm. off, mm -hmm. but that sort of the fear in people's mind that what if it gets worse? What if the next time he hits me? Yeah. You know? Yes, there's um, one. There's, so there's, it's this weird internal battle. Yeah, I, I hear it. I can hear it. You go, you go back and forth in this very conversation. Guess there's one more comment I want to add. And this comes from Medicine Sans Frontier within Afghanistan. They said, we are here. We are still working. Afghans need us. And international community, you need to pay attention. Have a look. MSF remain committed to work in Afghanistan. We have today five projects that continue delivering health care to the population without interruption. And we are very concerned about the potential collapse of the health system around us. It was a system already very weak, uh, suffering about lack of fundings, these fundings coming mainly from abroad. And today we have the main donor saying that they will stop their support to the country. The situation is dire and we need everyone to not turn them back to the country. Guess you've inspired a lot of conversation on YouTube. I'm just going to bring in a couple of comments just before I go. Black Mountain says we must be more positive and give Taliban a chance. If they do wrong and not follow human rights, then we can speak up. This is a conversation that is not going away. I love that we've expanded our stream family. Charlotte, you're part of the family. Nadima, welcome to the stream. And Ali, always part of the family. YouTube commenters, <laughs> <laughs> you live here. All right, you can't escape us. Thanks so much, guests. Thank you, YouTube commenters, for being part of today's show. I'll see you next time. Take care.